Hello everyone, today we'll be going over the Smith Moro Gambit. This is one of my favorite choices against the Sicilian defense, and it's very aggressive. With the Sicilian defense can be very annoying to E4 players, because with E4 you want to play very sound, safe, um, but the Sicilian defense prevents you from playing uh, a very, I guess, theoretically safe game. Uh, so I prefer to play a very aggressive opening, um, which is the Smith Moro Gambit against the Sicilian defense. So let's dive right into it. It starts with uh, e4, and obviously the Sicilian defense, and now you play d4. Uh, if your opponent takes the pawn, instead of taking back with the queen, uh, and then having a queen in the center, um, I much prefer to, to play this move here, which is a smooth moral gambit. Um, with a queen in the center, uh, your opponent will simply develop a knight and kick the queen back. Uh, or not necessarily, not necessarily back, but kick the queen again. And so your opponent develops a piece and forces you to move a piece a second time. So for this reason, I prefer to, to go ahead and play c3. And now, if your opponent takes, then you can go ahead and grab back the knight uh, with the knight. If your opponent doesn't take, then next move you can grab with the pawn, and you'll regain your center pawns, and it's going to be a, a fairly successful game for you. Uh, now, before I get into the two main lines that I'm going to be showing in this video, uh, I wanted to talk to you first about the main ideas that you have with this gambit because it's a very, very um, aggressive but theoretically um, kind of precise opening in the sense that you have these steps that you have to take uh, to complete the opening. So I consider the opening completed once your rooks are, um, I guess, uh, connected. Uh, and to get there, these are, what this, these are the steps and the moves that I suggest. Uh, I would take out your bishop here. Uh, this, this square here uh, is very is a huge target for you. Um, F7 is a very weak spot. It's only protected by the king, and so you can use that and uh, move out your bishop to C4 and attack it. So I would take out your bishop. I would take out your knight as well. Uh, I would take. I would then castle kingside. Uh, I would move your queen after that. Um, make sure that you move your queen um, to E2 only after your bishop is moved out, because otherwise it would block it. Uh, and eventually I would move out your bishop, your other bishop, uh, and, and then your rooks will be combined. Uh, and, and in this game, the, the two files here, the C file and the D file, are very open. And you want your rooks to be on C1 and D1 to be able to control the two open or semi-open files. So that's why it's very important to have your, your rooks connected early uh, within the opening. And so you'll see that in this line that I'm about to show you, the rooks are going to get very early, uh, early they're going to get connected, and you're not going to move a lot of other pawns. For the most part, you're just going to move your minor pieces and major pieces and connect the rooks. So let's show you what this could look like. Uh, if your opponent takes out their knight, which is the first variation I'll look at, then you simply take out your own knight. Um, you can also take out your bishop immediately, but I would first take out your knight. After your opponent moves the pawn, you can take out your bishop, and then your opponent uh, was probably going to move this pawn as well, trying to move or have a spot for the bishop to go and also free the spot for the queen potentially later in the game. So you can castle, and like I said, really early quick castle. Um, it, it, it's a very uh, a good good position for you, and you're, you're threatening to get your rook to, D, to D1 very quickly and have a nice attack, um, or not attack, but a nice support on the, on the open, uh, or in this case, semi-open file. And now your opponent takes out their knight. You go ahead and move out your queen um, to E2. And then your opponent takes out their bishop. You go ahead, like I said, move to d1 with the rook. And, and your opponent's probably going to continue pushing the pawns, but you now have a couple of options. You can go ahead and, and not pin, but put pressure on this knight here. You can uh, even try to fianchetto the bishop, but I much prefer to just take out the bishop really quickly. Uh, and then after that, move out uh, your, your other rook to c1. So this is essentially the first line that I'm going to show you. The next line that I want to go ahead and talk to you guys about is another uh, in, another line that you might encounter, which uh, instead of moving out the knight, it begins with going ahead and playing this move here, blocking the bishop from having much power uh, against this pawn um, on f7. This is um, a good idea, but it doesn't prove to be a challenge for you. Um, as you'll see, you, you simply develop very normally and very similarly to your other developments. And that's one theme in the Smith Mora Gambit. You develop very, um, very similarly in all variations. 
here your opponent might go ahead and take out their own pawn to prepare to to I guess uh, push push your bishop back but that doesn't bother you you go ahead and castle after your opponents play this move you move your bishop uh, back and still keep an eye on this long diagonal um, and now they might develop a minor piece uh, you can go ahead and pin it uh, and and they can develop the other minor piece um, and from here you can go ahead and move your queen uh, well, this is probably not what they're going to do, but from here you can go ahead and move out your queen to either one of these two spots, and like I said, get your uh, d1 and c1 rooks ready. Um, you're probably instead going to see this move here, unpinning the knight, uh, and, and again, similar idea, move your queen out to one of these spots, and c1 or d1 um, works perfectly. Uh, before I end the video, I wanted to go ahead and mention that this opening, uh, maybe you noticed, is very similar to um, another opening, uh, which is, uh, one second, sorry. This opening is very similar to another opening, which is instead of going ahead and capturing the knight uh, immediately, you go ahead and play this move here. And after the pawn, uh, or sorry, instead of capturing the pawn with the knight immediately, after the pawn captures the pawn, you go and capture the bishop. And this is a very solid opening. It's, it's one of my um, favorite responses to the Sicilian defense, and it goes very well with, with the smith Moore gambit. Um, because they're very similar ideas. You want to do the exact same thing uh, and get your, 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 your rooks uh, on C1 and D1. I'll see you guys in the next video.